You're listening to episode 34 of Burning Brightly, Boundaries Are Like Broccoli. This is Burning Brightly, a podcast for Christian moms who are feeling called to build a business and share their light with the world. I'm Bonnie Wiscombe, a life coach, mom, and entrepreneur, and I'm honored to be your guide as you face this business building adventure full of highs, lows, and everything in between. This is where we help each other find the courage to shine. Welcome back to the podcast, my friends. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you about an awesome audio summit that I am putting on starting next week, and it is going to be for any life coach who is new or stalled and really struggling to get their business up and running. So I have six expert guests, including myself, talking about all the topics necessary to bust through those challenges that we have at the beginning of launching our coaching business, including how to find on-camera confidence, how to balance work and family, how to find the right niche, create the perfect offer, overcome tech overwhelm, all the things that I see new coaches struggle with so much. So registration opens on Monday, November 27th. Check out the link in the show notes and make sure that you register. It is totally free and I want you to have access to all these amazing experts so that you can finally get that business up and running. Okay, without further ado, let's talk boundaries. Boundaries are a real hot button topic right now. Thankfully, I think more and more of us are waking up to the importance of mental health and we're understanding what boundaries are, why we need them, how to enforce them, what happens when they break down or we do not enforce them. And hopefully we're all getting a a better grasp of how important these boundaries are. So I hope it is obvious why I named this episode a little tongue in cheek that boundaries are like broccoli because they are something that our minds desperately need, just like our bodies need broccoli, but they're not always fun to eat like vegetables, right? Now, I almost call it boundaries are like Brussels sprouts, but I actually love Brussels sprouts. Why do they get such a bad rap? I don't know. They're one of my favorites, but boundaries are similar to those vegetables that you could take or leave. Not your favorite. You know you're, they're good for you, and actually boundaries are not only good for you, coincidentally, they are good for the people around you, but they're not particularly fun to deal with. Kind of like how you're probably not going to sit down with a plate of broccoli and just eat it for a snack during a Netflix binge session. Not your idea of a favorite snack. Not the most fun, but very necessary. Also easy to ignore them, but they're critical for our health and the health of our relationships. So I have an analogy for you guys. Shocker, I'm the queen of analogies, but I always have to have something to compare these concepts to to help me understand it a little bit better. Think about the last time that you went on a roller coaster, one of those really crazy ones that shoots you 60 miles an hour and flips you upside down and does all these crazy things. You sit down in the seat, you pull down the harness, and what's the first thing you do once that harness locks? you push against it. Now, why are we pushing against the harness? Are we hoping the restraint mechanism will fail? No, we're pushing back to ensure that it is secure. We want to know 100% whether or not this thing will hold us in because it's freaky and scary when we're flipping upside down. So the analogy was actually first explained to me in terms of teenagers and how they push back against boundaries and restrictions sometimes. Now, they're not hoping that those boundaries fail. They want to know where the line lies so that they can feel safe in their relationship with us and in the big wide world that they're exploring. So that's a whole other discussion about how important boundaries are with kids. But the same holds true with boundaries for others, for the adults in our life. People often push back, especially if they don't know how to honor a boundary. Now, maybe you haven't taught them how to honor your boundaries, or maybe you just haven't even communicated with them that it is a boundary. So just notice that when there is pushing back on the boundaries that you set up, it's totally okay. It doesn't mean you need to drop the boundary. It doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It just requires a little bit of education, a little bit of adjustment in order for you to enforce it. Now, let me also point out here that the looser the boundary is, just like the restraint on a roller coaster the more uncomfortable we are. Imagine going on a crazy flip you upside down roller coaster and the restraint is wiggling. (laughs) I think I would be screaming my head off more so than what I normally do on a roller coaster. Same thing with boundaries. It makes everyone uncomfortable when we're not sure where the line lies. So those tight boundaries in our relationships, they keep us safe and comfortable and keep everyone happy. Now, before we go any further, let's define what a boundary is. The best definition I have ever heard is that a boundary is where one person ends and where another one begins. It's kind of like a personal space fence, only it goes well beyond just personal space. But that's part of what we learn as we grow up, where one person's personal space or desires ends and where ours begins. At the beginning, when you're a child, 
that doesn't exist. You're all over your mom all the time. You're in the bathroom with her. We all know as moms that that just kids don't get that that kind of per personal space boundary. But this is something that eventually we all learn. Most of us actually don't realize that we have or need these boundaries until someone crosses one. So let me give you a few examples to make this a little bit clearer. Who is allowed to come into your home without knocking? Is there anyone in your life that can just walk in your house besides your immediate family members? So that might be an extended family member. It might be a close neighbor or a best friend. It might be one of your kids' friends. Maybe there's nobody you allowed to do that. That is a boundary that you've created. Another example, who is allowed to hug you without first asking? Another boundary. What pet names or nicknames can people call you? Boundary. So all of these are instances of boundaries and very often instances where these boundaries get crossed. And all of this is relative. Everybody has boundaries that are different, which is why it requires some give and take in a relationship to understand where someone is comfortable versus where you're comfortable. Let's say, for example, that in my mind, once I have your number programmed in my phone, I think that means I can just walk into your house or I can just call you anytime I want and talk to you for an hour. <laughs> Maybe my neighbor does not think that's the case, that I have to be friends with her for 10 or 15 years before I can ever walk into your, her house then we're gonna have a little bit of a clash. We'll eventually have to come to some sort of an agreement about what boundaries she has, what boundaries I have, and where we can meet in the middle. Now, I'll say here that very often, we are surrounded for most of our life by people who have similar boundaries as us, especially if we were raised in the same town, our siblings were raised in the same household with us. Very often we grow up expecting people to behave similarly to us because they're just in, in our same community, in our same family. But I promise you that as the day is long, eventually someone will come slamming through your boundaries. And very often they will have zero clue that they are doing it. And that is when there's a boundary problem. That is when your eyes open up to this phenomenon of boundaries and you go, oh, hold on a second. That is not okay with me. Now think for a second about what it feels like to have someone slam through a boundary like that. It feels a little violating. Think for a second if a random stranger were to come up to you and hug you out of nowhere. Uh, violating. Or if you've ever been pregnant, a random stranger come up and rub your belly. Happens all the time. Super awkward. Or somebody just hops in your car without permission. Feels a little violating. So these are boundary violations. And admittedly, they are extreme examples. But a neighbor who maybe overstays her welcome could also be a boundary violation. Or a friend who calls over and over and over and over on the same day and doesn't seem to understand that you have other things to do. So these smaller, simpler, maybe a little bit more innocuous examples can still elicit that same sort of response of feeling violated, but maybe in a lesser sense. So pay really close attention to the emotions that come up for you when you're around certain people and certain behaviors. And then you'll be able to acknowledge when someone is violating a boundary that you have, but maybe haven't acknowledged before. So that has been what has happened to me historically. I didn't really understand boundaries. I didn't really have stated boundaries in my mind until, until people crossed them. And I went, oh, okay, that didn't feel great. Something's happening here. What is happening? And as I learned this work, I understood, oh, that person crossed the boundary that I never communicated to them. I need to make sure they know this is something that's important to me and then to enforce it, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Now, what does this emotional response look and feel like when a boundary is crossed? Well, for me, like I said, feels a little bit violating. Depending on the severity of the boundary crossing, my nervous system reacts. So I go into a little bit of fight or flight. My heart spikes a little bit. Maybe I get a little bit sweaty. It feels like I'm a little bit under attack maybe. But like I said, those little lesser boundary crossings don't always elicit that kind of a response. Maybe more of an extreme boundary crossing would make me feel really fight or flight or if it's something that was repeated over and over and over. Other emotions you can experience when this comes up unexpectedly are things like anger or resentment towards the person who's crossed the boundary. Maybe just annoyance and you might start closing down in that person's presence. So let's say you have a friend who constantly gossips every time you get together and you hate it and you've asked her not to and she still keeps doing it. Then you're going to probably start closing off that relationship. Maybe not accepting phone calls or lunch dates. You asked her to not gossip because that made you uncomfortable. She kept doing it. You're probably going to start pulling away a little bit. So here is the crux of boundaries. It is so easy to blame another person for violating your boundary, but it is not their fault, especially not the beginning. Why? Because likely you haven't yet told them that it's a boundary for you. You have likely not even told them that that is a boundary violation and it makes you uncomfortable. You might feel anger, resentment, annoyance, like we said, frustration with this other person. But if you have not expressly stated that it's a boundary, it's not their fault. It's yours, which is a little bit of tough love. But I have had to learn this over and over and over. That hurts to hear it. 
But expressing what a boundary is and isn't to your loved ones is a hard thing to do sometimes. I'm sorry to always call out us wonderful Christian women, but sometimes we struggle with this because we don't like to hurt people's feelings. So many of us are people pleasers and we just want everyone to be happy. We don't want anyone to think we don't like them or we don't like what they're doing or that we just want them to go away. We just want everyone to be happy and smiling and and sing kumbaya every time they come around. But the boundary is not for you, okay? When we enforce a boundary, it's not because it's going to make us feel better. Likely, it's going to make us feel worse for a short period of time. Although eventually, hopefully, it'll make you feel better. A boundary is for the relationship. How do we know? Because when we allow boundaries to be crossed, relationships suffer every time. Every time there's a boundary that someone does not enforce and it gets regularly violated, that relationship suffers. I promise you it happens every time. So if you are struggling to enforce a boundary and tell someone, I love you so much, but I just can't respond to your texts all day, or I'd prefer if you only called me on Fridays, can we limit it to once a week, whatever, it might feel uncomfortable to do that, but the relationship will thrive because then you will no longer show up with resentment and anger towards the person. Now let's, let's go back to our dating days for just a minute to, to share an example. If you're a people pleaser like I am, you probably experienced this a lot when dating. You went out with a guy who was cute, mildly interested in, really nice. And then at the end of the date, you realize, I'm not really interested, but he is and he wants to see you again. What do you do? Well, many of us, to our utter shame, would just say yes to another date. Or even worse, we would just dodge phone calls over and over and over. Why do we do that? Why would we not just say, hey, I had so much fun, not really interested in another date. See you around. Because that would make us uncomfortable and make us feel like the bad guy. That's all we would have to say. And now that I'm sitting here as a 43-year-old mom of a bunch of kids, it blows my mind that I didn't have the courage to have a 15-second conversation with guys sometimes to spare their feelings later on. That seems so mean to me now, but in the time I was just like, oh, I can't, I can't say that. That would hurt his feelings. No, you know what's going to hurt his feelings is you constantly pushing him off over and over and over thinking he's not going to notice. He's going to notice. Now he avoids you forever because you're a jerk because you couldn't just come out right away and say, I don't want to continue a dating relationship. Now, allowing someone to continue crossing your boundaries is cruel and unnecessary to both you and the other person because you will not be able to control your emotions if they keep crossing it. Like I said, it damages the relationship every time and one simple conversation can change everything. It can ensure that people don't waste time with you, like in the dating example, or it can help you to cultivate a relationship that is so much deeper because you're not allowing that person to cross that boundary. Let's talk about the selfish aspect now for a minute of requiring our boundaries to be honored. Ensuring that our own needs are being met is the best way of having healthy, whole relationships. Too many of us enter into relationships and just thinking, I'll just sit here and be a doormat so that everybody is happy. No. Surefire way to anger and resentment. So let me just repeat that really quickly. Ensuring our own needs are being met is the best way to make sure we have healthy, whole relationships. I know this because I am a mother to a bazillion children. If my needs are not being met, I am a crappy mother. I have a terrible relationship with all my kids because I am damaged in some way, I have to make sure that my needs are being met first. I'm just yelling and freaking out all the time because emotionally, spiritually, physically, I'm a mess. So we do not have to harbor resentment against other people because we get to communicate which behaviors are okay and which are not. So instead of sitting here and stewing about how Susie just keeps calling me over and over and over and doesn't get the hint, you get to just say, Susie, I love you, but life is crazy. Can we hang out like once a quarter, once every three months? I would love to take you to lunch and we can just talk for hours. Isn't that so much better than you just sending Susie to voicemail every single day until she finally thinks you hate her? Of course it is. Make sure your own needs are being met first and then kindly and compassionately communicate that to the other person. Now we get to talk about my favorite aspect of boundaries. And that is the part that all the Christians bring up. Did Jesus have boundaries? And the answer is absolutely he did. If we're going to look to Christ as the ultimate example of behavior, we want to see where he enforce boundaries as well. So this is a really fun activity. The next time you read the New Testament, go and look for Jesus and his boundaries. There are quite a few examples I'll share here with you. First one, he loved everyone and he forgave the sinners. And then he told them to go and sin no more. That was his boundary. I will forgive you. Now I'm commanding you do not do this again. He calmly sat outside the temple and braided a whip. 
And then he drove money changers out, not calmly and not peacefully. He drove them out of his temple because the boundary was, you do not change money in my father's house. He taught and blessed and loved the multitudes of people. And then he also regularly removed himself from them to rest and to pray to his father. He took care of the things that needed to be taken care of spiritually and physically so he could show up in his best form for the people. Isn't that amazing? I love showing Christian women that I coach that boundaries are absolutely a Christian eternal phenomenon and something that's so important for us to learn. Now, if you want to learn more about boundaries, especially from a Christian perspective, I highly recommend the book called Boundaries. It's by two authors. Their names are Henry Cloud, John Townsend, and the full title is Boundaries, When to Say Yes, How to Say No, and Take Control of Your Life. So go look that one up, add it to your to-read list. It is a great one. And I'm so glad that they created it from this Christian perspective because I think Christ is just an absolutely excellent example of boundaries as a human need, just like food, water, and rest. We are not expected to be a doormat. That is not a Christian phenomenon. Okay, so remember, boundaries are where we end and where someone else begins. Please don't allow your boundaries to be crossed. If they are, we have some work to do. We have to start enforcing them. We need to communicate our boundaries very lovingly, and then we need to continue to communicate them because it takes people time to learn. I'm sure all of us have been guilty of doing this to someone else, and hopefully that person has taught us lovingly and slowly and consistently how to honor their boundaries. If someone doesn't understand this and continues to cross those boundaries, even if you communicate it with them, then the most logical consequence to enforce is less access to you. So if someone keeps walking into your house without permission or showing up in a way that you've asked them not to, then chances are good you're just going to pull back. That's probably going to be the best thing for the relationship so you don't keep showing up out of anger and resentment towards this person all the time. That is how we can do this with love and kindness from this Christ-like place and to better benefit the relationship. All right, so how do we enforce these boundaries? All right, well, most of us want our home to be a very safe place. So let's continue with this example of someone just walking in your house. Let's say your brother loves to do this and you have to tell them, hey, bud, I love you so much. It's so fun when you come over and hang out, but I just need you to know that anytime you're coming, just shoot me a quick text and please knock before you come in. That makes me feel a little bit more, more comfortable. And he'll say, yeah, totally, no big deal, I'll do it. Next time, he might not. He might forget to text. He might forget to call. It's a habit. He Maybe he just walks right in again. And then... A, a kind reminder is necessary. Hey, remember, I just really, really need you to knock before you come in. If I really need to make sure I'm not walking around in my underwear. Please knock when you come over. I'd really appreciate that. And then it gets to be up to you how many times you allow that boundary to be crossed before maybe you start limiting access to you. Maybe when your brother comes over, you start locking the doors. Or maybe you just conveniently aren't home on the times when he usually swings by. You need to communicate this boundary first though and give several reminders before you start doing that because otherwise it's just passive aggressive. Because then when your brother wonders why is she never home or why are the doors locked, he'll realize, oh, she did ask me to knock and I haven't done that for the last four times. Maybe I should start knocking. That would be the respectful thing to do. Hopefully the people that you love will start honoring those boundaries because they value the relationship as well. But you might have to do a little bit of education. You might have to say, hey, you know what? When you just walk into my house, it actually makes me really feel angry towards you. And I don't want to feel angry. I love you. And I actually love when you come over, but I don't want to be upset. And that's not on you. That's on me. So I'm asking you to please knock so that I can be calm and rational when you come over. Now, let me be clear here. We are not delegating our emotions to someone else. With coaching, we know we can manage our mind. But if at all possible, we want to change a circumstance that is driving us crazy. We don't purposely become doormats and then just try to manage our emotions when everybody crosses our boundaries all the time. So that boundaries is circumstance work. It's where we go to our loved ones and say, I would love for you to honor this boundary. And if you don't, then I'm not going to be available as much as before because it's this is really hard for me. Does that make sense? So we're not delegating our negative emotion to somebody else and telling them it's their fault. It's still up to us and we can manage those thoughts, but it's so much easier to do if we acknowledge that our nervous system doesn't love when people walk into our house without knocking. Hopefully that makes sense. You guys, sometimes with a loved one, this is very, very hard to do, but I promise it's not impossible. And by doing so and being really vulnerable with the person and really honest, it can make the relationship just thrive if you are consistent with this. So that's it. This is how boundaries are like broccoli. They're so good for you and they can be painful to eat, sometimes painful to implement. So I hope you guys get your vegetables in the form of enforcing boundaries. If this is a hard phenomenon for you, just take a few minutes to do some journaling, write down your thoughts about what comes up for you when you need to enforce a boundary for someone and write down some examples of boundaries that you have felt that have been crossed and you've liked to have enforced, but maybe not had the guts to do so. 
And then make sure you are protecting yourself from those who refuse to honor your boundaries even after, you, after you've had kind conversations with them. We want to have good relationships with people, but some people, if they don't respect us, don't deserve a relationship with us, okay? I want you guys to be honored and respected in your relationships. I want you to have great, thriving, deep relationships with your loved ones and with your friends, and boundaries are the way to do it. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving this week and enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Are you ready to get started on your dream business? Join Finding Your Side Hustle, my digital course that will guide you through discovering what it is you love and how to turn it into a family-friendly business. Are you ready for one-on-one support as a mom or entrepreneur? Schedule a free coaching call with me to work on the goals you have for your life, including business success, weight loss, or better relationships. I can't wait to help you make progress on your dreams.